in this screencast on chapter 11 synthesis from Klein's third edition of organic chemistry we're going to look at uh, a starburst uh, scheme where we're transforming this main functional group which is an alkyne uh, into um, different functional groups um, so it's basically looking at um, what are the reagents that will transform that alkyne uh, into these different uh, functional groups. Uh, so in terms of the broader picture of, of this chapter and where we're going in organic chemistry too, uh, it, it's a review of the chemistry of alkynes. Uh, and then uh, once we review that, how we can take these different functional groups, sequence them together and make more complex molecules. So let's go ahead and get started uh, again. This is an alkyne that we're starting with. And um, so maybe the, the first thing we'll do is, is look at uh, this, this route here, taking the alkyne to this compound here, which is called a geminal dibromide. And geminal just means uh, it's a 1-1 one, one relationship. So you can see that both bromines are on the same carbon atom. And so how would we do that or what's changing? If you notice, we have a terminal alkyne. There's sp, SP hybridized carbon H. It's now getting two more hydrogens. So um, the most straightforward um, way to do this would treat with HBr uh, and excess. Um, of, of that reagent. So what if we wanted to um, go back um, from that geminal dibromide? Uh, we would treat with uh, just an excess of base. So I would say um, a good base to use for this is sodium amide. And essentially what that's going to do is an, an elimination of HBr, and then a second elimination of HBr, and obviously we would need some sort of um, acidic workup in the process to get back to here. So what about um, going up this way? Uh, th this would just be one equivalent of HBr. So what are we doing? We're protonating generating a vinyl carbocation bromide attacks we get this vinyl bromide so vinyl bromide and vinyl means it's directly attached to an sp2 hybridized carbon so vinyl bromide if we wanted to go from this vinyl bromide back down to this geminal dibromide again a second equivalent of hbr Again, we protonate here, generate a carbocation, bromide, bromide attacks. We get the geminal dibromide. So what if we're, we're moving up to this ketone? Uh, this is simply the hydration of an alkyne. You can see that this carbon is going to become this methyl group. This internal carbon is going to become the ketone carbonyl. So we could treat this with an excess of um, water and a catalytic amount of sulfuric acid. That would do the hydration reaction. So what about if we wanted to oxidize or get the carbonyl on the other carbon, the terminal carbon? This would be, um, again, forming an aldehyde. This would be a hydroboration oxidation, so we would treat with borane, THF, and then follow that by um, the workup with sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. So um, essentially, if you look at these two compounds, our constitutional isomers of one another. So what's changing is the location of the carbonyl um, and, and which carbon is getting the oxygen. So these conditions um, 
are sort of orthogonal in a sense um, that you're getting the carbonyl at the terminal and then here you're getting it at the eternal. So if we wanted to convert um, an alkyne into this uh, dibromide, this would just be simply treating with bromine and say a solvent that's non-participatory uh, like dichloromethane. So we would end up with um, that. If we treated with an excess of bromine, we would then, um, so, so similar, if we treated with more bromine, this compound or just an excess to begin with, you're going to end up with this tetrabromide here. So again, bromination of an alkyne, you would get um, a 1-2 addition first, and then excess, you're going to get another 1-2 addition. So each carbon of the alkyne is getting two bromines. What about um, here? Uh, you can see that uh, essentially what we're doing is oxidizing each carbon of the alkyne. So this would be an ozonolysis reaction. Um, so ozone gas. And uh, basically what's, what's happening is an oxidative cleavage of each sp hybridized carbon so that we're forming uh, essentially a carboxylic acid and then carbon dioxide. So this would be oxidation state three. This would be oxidation state four. And again, that's simply counting one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That's, that's what we're referring to is that oxidation state. If we're going down now in the starburst pattern, we see, okay, we have a terminal alkyne. We want to end up with an internal one. So this is one carbon. We need to make that bond. We have an acidic hydrogen. So say we treat with uh, sodium hydride and then some electrophile, say methyl iodide. That's going to get us to our desired internal alkyne. And so these last three transformations, we're, we're doing um, reductions. You can see that uh, the ring is intact, but the alkyne is being reduced. So we're doing a, a one-stage reduction, two-stage reduction, one-stage reduction. So uh, in, the, in the example to the right and down, we're ending up with a trans alkene. And the conditions to take an alkyne to a trans alkene are sodium metal with liquid ammonia as the solvent. So that's a dissolving metal reduction of an alkyne to a trans alkene. The middle reaction straight down, we're, we're reducing that alkyne fully. So we're going to use excess hydrogen gas, a metal such as palladium on carbon and then a solvent like ethanol. And then finally to the, to the left and down, we're ending up with a cis alkene. And to do that, we're gonna use hydrogen gas again, but now we want a, a poison, so barium sulfate with our palladium on carbon and ethanol. And so what the poison this poison, what it does is essentially it, it stops it at a one-stage reduction. So instead of fully, re, fully reducing this down to the alkene, it, it stops at uh, this here. So it looks like I missed uh, taking this 1,2 this dibromide actually to this starting material. So let's go ahead and, and grab that one. So this is, this is called a vicinal dibromide. And vicinal means uh, a 1-2 relationship. So compare that to geminal, which is 1-1. One, one. Vicinal is 1-2. So to take this to that, we would treat with excess base. Um, you know, again, let's just use something like sodium amide. 
So essentially that's going to do a series of E2 eliminations. So we would eliminate HBr here and then HBr here to get from the, the vicinal dibromide to the alkyne. So this has been um, a short screencast on a starburst pattern taking an alkyne to different functional groups which illustrates to us the utility of alkynes uh, into uh, other functional groups that we can then do further manipulations on. And that's a big part of organic too, is the sequencing of reactions to do complex synthesis.